All right, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Nick Diego. Uh, I'm a core contributor and a sponsored contributor by Automatic. Um, we are going to be chatting today around about 6.3, which is coming up. Um, originally on like the meetup schedule, we were going to talk about some ways to extend um, the editor from like a theme perspective. Uh, that was going to be presented by my colleague, Justin Tadlock. Unfortunately, he is in the middle of a storm down in Alabama and doesn't have power, so he won't be able to join us today. But I think we still have plenty to talk about. And, you know, I'm going to present a little bit about 6.3, and then we can just have kind of a casual discussion around block theming, things that people are seeing, things that people want to see in WordPress, maybe things that are preventing them from adopting block themes, that sort of thing. So I think we'll still have a good discussion, even though we're missing Justin. Um, which means for our July hallway hangout, we're probably going to focus pretty much exclusively on how to extend the editor uh, from a theme perspective. And Justin had, and I'll share uh, some work that he's doing to give you a sneak peek of that later. Uh, but he has some really interesting ways of providing some really neat UI within the block editor for those that are building themes, which is which is pretty cool. So, uh, but we'll save that save that for the next one. Um, but what I was so. Well, I am currently, I'm one of four, but I'm one of four editor triage leads for 6.3. 6.3 is the next WordPress release that's coming out. So I'm going to drop in just for those that aren't familiar with the kind of the timeline we have. Um, where's my chat? So this is the timeline for WordPress 6.3. So even though the release isn't until the beginning of August, the release goes through numerous steps to, in order to make sure that it's ready to distribute to 43% of the world uh, or internet. Um, so the first step in that process is what's called beta one, uh, the first beta for 6.3. So that's actually happening uh, next, uh, less than two weeks from now on Tuesday, the 27th. Um, and so in these last kind of week and a half, it's kind of the, the mad rush to get as many enhancements as we can into 6.3, uh, sorry, into, uh, yeah, into 6.3, because as soon as beta one starts, really no new enhancements can go into 6.3. Now there are some exceptions if there's an enhancement that's really tied to a new feature and all the core contributors agree that it should be in there, then it can be what's known as blessed, and, and brought into the release. But for all intents and purposes, new functionality, new features really stop once we get to beta one. And then from beta one all the way until the release, it's bug fixes, making testing, making sure everything still works, fixing bugs, fixing regressions, that sort of thing. Um, so that gives us a good month or so to make sure the release is in order. So what I wanted to do today is kind of showcase some of the stuff that is coming in 6.3 to kind of give you an idea of what's changing. And a fair amount is, uh, especially when it comes to the interface of the editor, how you work with, you know, especially block themes. Obviously, that's the, the, the main focus of everything right now. Um, and so that hopefully, you know, the folks in this room here are the more... I guess, enfranchised WordPress users than most people using WordPress, right? And so you were the you were the the bleeding edge of WordPress. And so being able to install the latest version of Gutenberg, test some of these new features, find bugs, there will be bugs, uh, and help us get WordPress in the best spot possible. Um, if you, if anybody is willing to do that, that would be awesome. So one of the, I know many of you have already participated in this. Um, but we run a call for testing. And so there is the current call for testing right now covers a lot of some of this new functionality. And some of you in this room have already participated and shared your feedback. Uh, thank you for that. Um, and there, you know, a lot of this is new. It's, and I'll dive into this so we have a visual look at it, but there's a lot of different uh, editing flows happening in the site editor now. And new flows, new functionality introduce some um, maybe wonkiness, maybe confusion. This is where, you know, we have that next month or so to kind of sort some of this stuff out. Um, but if you're looking for an easy way to help test, um, the call for testing, which I just linked in the chat is a great way to do that. Um, and so 
kind of back to the timeline. So again, 6.3 beta one is going to come out on uh, two weeks from Tuesday, past Tuesday. Uh, and yesterday, uh, we released Gutenberg 16.0. And Gutenberg 16.0 is the second to last Gutenberg release. And I'll put the, the release post in the chat. This is the second to last Gutenberg release before the beta one. So we have 16.1, uh, the which will start going out. Uh, the release candidate will go out next week. Um, so if you're looking to test, like what's going to be in 16, 6, uh, 6 6.3, what are the things that I'm going to be contend with? Testing, uh, you know, 6.2, the current WordPress release, 6.2.2, with Gutenberg 16.0 or soon 16.1 will give you a really good look of what's coming um, for 6.3. And then obviously, once the beta comes out, you can also install and use that as well. So let's just dive in. I want to show you some of kind of the top level improvements or enhancements or changes that are coming in 6.3. And then we can kind of open the floor to discussion, things that people are excited about, worried about, um, would like to see changed, added, whatever. Uh, we can have a nice conversation about that. Um, but I wanted to kind of kind of set the stage for those maybe who haven't explored some of these new features yet, just to kind of see, see where we're at. So I'm gonna share my screen. And here we have a nice blank WordPress install. So I'm going to I'll make this a little bit bigger. OK, so whenever I share my screen, I like to make sure people are very clear on what's being used here. So I am using just a blank, uh, not a blank, uh, stock WordPress install 16.2.2. And for plugins, I'm just using Gutenberg 16.0.0. I'm not using Gutenberg trunk or anything like that. I'm just using the version of Gutenberg you can download right now from the plugins repo. And I'm just going to be using the 2023 theme. I do have a child theme here just for some added functionality. It's not going to pertain to this uh, this talk here, um, but it's like my child theme I build all my examples off of. So, But it's just 2023 under the hood uh, with some minor tweaks. So right off the bat, they're the biggest changes, I think, from a visual perspective come in the site editor. So let's just head on over to the site editor and see what this looks like. I'm actually going to go back and we're going to watch this again because one of the big changes is actually the loading state. So if you're familiar with the site editor in 6.2.2, it's a mouthful. Whenever you would load the site editor, it would sometimes like, it would like, dagger into existence, like parts of it would load at different times. Um, and it kind of creates like a jarring experience for folks. And so what changed in, it will change in 6.3, what changes now if you're using the latest version of Gutenberg, is when you load the editor, you'll get this loading black screen with a little spinner. Now I will, I this is a seemingly very small thing, but for folks that have fairly large WordPress installs, especially if you're using a lot of you know, third-party plugins or extensions, simply testing this is really helpful because we've heard some reports of folks who have really big websites you know, with hundreds of users that that loading screen, I'll just refresh again, takes quite a bit to load. Um, and so that's something that we're keeping a close eye on. So if you have like a big demo site or you know, even a site that you've, is using a block theme and you feel comfortable testing this, um, that would be helpful. Uh, it's, it's, I personally have had a hard time replicating that really long load time, um, but it has been reported. So, um, but that is one of the small changes that's been made to the site editor. And what you'll start to see is in a lot of different places, like a, like a polish or refinement on a lot of some of this functionality. And it's just to try and make, you know, the site editor has been in existence for a long time. It's gone through numerous iterations. In 6.2, we removed the beta tag. Obviously, a lot of improvements are still coming. Um, but the goal kind of for 6.3 is to try to tighten it up, make it feel a little bit uh, nicer. Again, instead of like it, 
coming into existence in pieces. Now there's like a loading screen, that sort of thing. The other thing that you're going to see is a lot more functionality in the sidebar. So recently we have styles now, so you can change the styles, uh, your style variations right from the sidebar panel. And you also notice that there's a bunch more icons here. So you can jump right to the storybook and you can see your storybook right from within, you know, this panel. You don't need, you can of course go into it here like you did could before. But you can do a lot more right from the styles panel. And again, you can edit styles and back and forth. So this this kind of flow of, you know, allowing people to change their style variations without, you know, having to dive into the actual editing, come over here, browse styles, then change them. It's just trying to making it a little bit more user friendly, especially for newer users. Um, and this even, you know, there's going to be a lot that's coming in 6.3 and there's going to be even more that's going to be coming in 6.4. So some of this is not, it will, when 6.3 comes out, it will be, I hesitate to say this, but good enough. And then it will be improved on in the future. And one of the big areas is pages. So this actually just came out, well, it came out previously, but a lot of improvement here was made in the last 16.0. So if you click on pages here, now you can see all the pages on your site. And this is pretty handy, especially if you have individual page designs that you know are pretty unique. Instead of having to go to the pages section um, of your site and edit those designs and then jump back to the site editor, maybe to make a global styles change, you can do all of that within the site editor. Now this flow is brand new and I expect that there's gonna be some bugs that are gonna be fixed in the next month, um, but you can do a lot here. You can add a new page, which is pretty cool. Now note that this adds it as a draft. This adds it as a draft. So there isn't like a published flow like you would have in the normal post and page editor where you could you know, create a page and publish it. You don't have all the functionality of post and page editor. You can't add a featured image yet. You can't. There are no meta boxes, you know, it, it's a fairly limited editing, editing experience, but the idea behind it is it really is focusing on that global style site editing where you can make changes to the page, make changes to global styles and kind of design out your site all within one place. So let's just add, you know, a sample page. So, so we'll do a, a draft page. And now you can see that now we're in the page. Um, and so if we go over to this panel here, you know, the normal settings panel, now you'll see that this is broken out where we can see, we can, one of the biggest challenges with content editing within the site editor is knowing what you're editing. Are you editing the pages content? Or are you editing the template? And this is something that's being explored on how do we, you know, how do we make this people understand, like, what are you editing? And so one of the iterations of this now is right now I am editing, you can see over here, it kind of shows me what I'm editing. Here I'm editing the post featured image, now that the title and post content. If I, but I can't click on the header and I can't click on the footer. It's not letting me do that. But I get this little pop-up that says, do you want to edit the template that, that, you know, that this page is using? And you can also click over here and click edit template. And when you do this, now you can edit the template for the, any generic page that that page that we just created was using. Getting used to this flow is going it, it to, it takes a bit. And there also might be some you know, improvements uh, based on community feedback. So again, if anybody has time to test it, share their feedback, you know, that's really helpful. But now that I'm in this template, it's like, well, how do I get back to my page? There's a back button here. Once you know it's there, it's easy to remember. But if you don't know it's there, you might be figuring out, how do I get back to where I was, right? So you can click back and then you'll go back to your page. And now you're back in your page and you can, you know, add your content like so. So this is, uh, again, a brand new flow for how to manage content and manage design uh, within the site editor when it comes to content editing. And if you click on back on the sidebar, you can see some meta information about the page. For example, there's no featured image, the status, the slug, and so forth. 
You can do some very few limited things like delete the draft page, but you can't publish. You can't add that featured image. I expect in the future that that will come, um, at least as far as I've seen, that isn't quite in the roadmap for 6.3. Basically, it's around stabilizing this flow, making it show you can at least do some editing with pages within the site editor. So uh, I'm going to stop there. I see we have a lot of comments in chat. Um, let's see what we got here. So is this stuff for editors and admins only? Um, I could be wrong. I always hesitate when I say this, but it's the site editor is, is you need to have admin level permissions for the site editor. So this right now is just restricted. I'm 99.9% .9 sure. Please someone correct me. You have to be an admin to access the site editor. Um, now you could of course have, so this is, it's powered by permissions. So whatever, I always forget, whatever the permissions that an admin has, if you had like a, like a role management plugin that allow you to create additional roles, or user roles, you could theoretically create like designer and give them access to the site editor as well. Um, but this, the site editor is quite locked down. Uh, this is something that I've heard from a lot. You know, how do we allow people to edit, you know, an editor, allow them to edit like just navigation or just the footer and nothing else. Um, that doesn't exist yet, uh, but it's it's like one of those really common, re commonly requested things that I think we're going to need a solution for in the future at some point. Um, yeah, edit, okay. Thank you, Justin, for sharing that. So it, it is a whole lot better. Now, I encourage folks to really get in there and try it because it, it's, at least for me, it it was it's such a different editing experience, especially for those of us that have been in WordPress forever. You know, I usually like my you know you go to your page, you edit your page, like everything is very disjointed, right? Um, where the site editor is trying to pull everything into one place, and with that, there are going to be some issues. I was chatting some people this morning about how like, well, now that I have pages, why don't I have everything else? <laughs> Why can't I do my featured image? Why, you know, why can't I do all the stuff that I normally do on a page in the site editor? And it's just a lot to bring into the site editor right now. And to think about that flow, um, you know, take some thought. So understand that the 6.3 is going to be kind of the first iteration of this, like bringing everything together. Um, because phase three, because we're basically finishing up phase two now. Phase three of the Gutenberg project is really around like workflows and collaboration. And it's really around like this editing flow stuff. Um, so, you know, it's a bit, it's a hard thing to solve, but also a very exciting thing because I've been starting to use this more so now where I can just edit all my pages right in the site editor. I can change the global styles. You know, you can do a lot of the design work that you would normally do in one place and you're not jumping back and forth from, from page to page. So those are pages. Um, there's some exploration around templates. Like sometimes like templates are kind of confusing. Like the 404 page on a site you think of it as a page, but it's actually a template. So that's why you're seeing 404 and search in the pages section, because for a user under the hood, we know there's a differentiation there, but like from a user perspective or even my own perspective, I, I want to edit my pages. I want to edit the 404 here. Like I'm in this section. I'm kind of in that flow of editing. I want this to be in one place. So that's why some you see some of this, these templates surfaced under pages. You also notice this little like home icon. This is to indicate that this page called home is actually using the front page template. Um, I can show you this in more examples. So let's uh, let's create a a posts page. Create a draft here. We'll save that. Now I'm going to go back to my settings. And we're going to go to reading and we're going to set the home page. Uh, let's just do blank page and we'll do post page. Oh, it's not published. Sorry. I need to publish the page before it will let me do it. There we go. All right. So this post page will be our blog. 
So I'll come back over here into reading. We'll change that to post page. So now if we go back to the site editor, you'll see, okay, this is a little hard to see, but see how there's like a little icon here and there's a, there's a, there's a, a home and then this little icon for posts. Uh, so it's very subtle. Once you know what it means, again, it's a little hard to know what it means, but um, this is to indicate which page has been designated as your front page and as your blog page, or your post page. So again, little things, and I think this might be improved, you know, making it a little bit more clear. Again, if we click on posts. Yeah, okay, so over again, this is hard to tell, but here you see that it says the home, You're, this is using the home template. Or if I click back over here on blank page, it's using, oh, this is using the blank template because that's what I had set up there. Anyway, a little tricky to understand how we surface this information and make it clear, I think is gonna be a big thing. This actually comment came up in the, in the call for testing. So um, you'll notice little things here and there related to, how these pages work throughout your site. What else do we have? The next big thing is the library. So you'll notice here that there's no template parts. Template parts are now part of what's being called the library. The library is pretty cool, but it's also in development. So the library is where all your template parts are, but eventually this is also be a place where it, uh, patterns in reusable blocks will also be stored. So you can see right here that there's a, a link for manage reusable blocks. Currently, this links to the old um, hidden uh, page for reusable blocks. Eventually, they will be pulled into this library. There's also conversation around patterns, being able to pull pa save patterns automatically. That will get pulled in here as well. So keep an eye on the library. The library is uh, this kind of, it's a library. It's gonna contain a lot of different stuff and template parts, patterns, reusable blocks. Now there's one thing I wanna mention about reusable blocks and patterns. And this you will have, you may have seen on the roadmap for 6.3. So I'll drop this in the chat. So this is a very, I will admit, a very ambitious roadmap uh, for 6.3. Um, zoom in a little bit. There we go. Okay, so one of the things that was called out here, if you scroll down a little bit, is the evolve the WP pattern block. And what this means is, so for those familiar, we've had the reusable block and we have patterns. And there's been a lot of community hope for what are called partially synced patterns. So the problem with a normal pattern is you insert it. And then if you ever want to like update that, con like the design of it later, you, you can't. You'd have to go into every instance of where that pattern is and update that design. The idea behind a synced pattern is that you could update the design of the pattern, but the content would change. So if you put the pattern in a bunch of different places and change like the heading and the image in this pattern, those would stay the same. But if you change the design of the pattern, you know, change the color or whatever, those would be updated across all the patterns. So it's like partially synced patterns. Then we have reusable blocks where it's fully synced, right? If you have a reusable block in many places, you update it, they all change. So you see how we have like these three different things, not synced, partially synced, and synced. So this effort to evolve the WP pattern block is to bring all that functionality into one thing um, that has kind of three different states, not synced, partially synced, fully synced, which would be reusable blocks. So that's why you're seeing this library idea come together because it's a place to house that one thing that has these three different states. So normal pattern, partially synced pattern, reusable block. Um, that work is still being done. People are, folks are working in earnest to try and get that ready for 
it's a very complicated thing to handle. Um, so we all have fingers crossed that that will make it in. But if you want more information about it, you can come to the uh, roadmap and check out this Evolve WP Patterns block for a lot more information around this, this, um, this approach. But either way, this kind of consolidation, instead of having like all these different things to talk about, it's really one thing with three different states, much cleaner approach. Um, and when implemented and, and when handled correctly, especially within this library, is going to be really, really cool. You know, you can create a, a reusable block, create a temple part, create a pattern, save them all, manage them all. Um, so very exciting to see that. But that's what you're seeing with this library. That's kind of the vision moving forward with the library. Right now, it's just a place uh, as of 16.3 to house your template parts, kind of set the stage for, for the future. All right, let's see here if anybody has any questions. If anybody does have questions, feel free to raise your hand or just say stop um, and, and say something. This is supposed to be relatively casual. So, you know, feel free to, to speak up. Um, okay, so Jeremy's saying a very good point. I actually comment, so commented on this earlier. So the problem with reusable blocks in the editor is you have a wide width cover block or whatever. You put it inside a reusable block and now it's constrained. Um, that is part of this process, right? To, to figure that out. And that, that's been a longstanding issue forever. And I think that for whatever reason, it's been kind of ignored because it's been a very hard problem to solve. But as soon as you have this discussion of pulling everything into one, well, now you need to solve that problem. So I fully expect that part of this process is maybe some of these longstanding issues with reusable blocks will get fixed because now they have to be because we're pulling everything into one thing. So. Um, so yes, that that is an issue with for sure with the uh, with the current usable usable lock implementation. Um, let's see here. Yeah, footnotes is another big one. Footnotes is another big one. Let's see, is that on here? I mean, I there's a lot on this on this roadmap. And I think we're getting, it's ambitious, we're getting pretty close, but I fully expect some of some of the stuff to get punted. Um, but, you know, such is the way with an open source project and, and, and how we move forward. All right, uh, let's see here. So that's the library. Okay, so I, now I wanna talk about- hey, Questions. Yeah, go for it. Justin and uh, Elisa. Oh, I'm sorry for that. Justin, uh, you're the top of my screen, so uh, why don't you go first? Uh, thank you. Um, so I think you did uh, gloss over it um, uh, uh, for briefly, but um, I was just wondering about how, um, if there were any plans to kind of, uh, so uh, you've got a lot of great content and functionality building out within this site editor. So I'm just wondering if, there was any uh, future plans to kind of uh, fine tune the access because um, at, at the moment it's a very catch all with just the uh, edit theme options permission and that's it really. Yeah. Um, at our agency, we kind of need to have editor access to the site editor, but only certain bits. So at the moment, what we're doing is we're having to kind of uh, filter um, the REST API callbacks um, mm -hmm. to kind of um, like give editors only certain access to certain template parts and things like that. Um, so just I was just wondering if there was uh, any any um, thoughts about kind of being able to fine tune, like maybe not permissions, but at least um, hooks or something that we can hook into, because I'm aware there's already kind of like that with blocks where you can um, filter the available blocks or you can uh, add, you know, um, remove, uh, insert a support for certain blocks that you don't want um, users to be able to directly insert and things. Absolutely. So I think that uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do a shameless plug here. Um, so this might be interesting uh, for you. This does not solve your problem. Uh, but this might be an interesting article if you're in terms of like permissions. So uh, there's a lot of cool. Uh, so there's a lot of cool client side filters, like at least for the post editor, 
that allow you to restrict functionality, whether it's setting or styles, all that kind of stuff uh, for blocks. So just as an aside, um, my biggest concern is what your concern. Um, we, we were at this, you know, a year ago, the site editor was nothing compared to what it is now. You know, we didn't have any of this stuff. And so it's really great that we've gotten this far, but now we need to address the concerns of folks like yourself who want to use this in a bit more of a, I don't know if enterprise is the right word, but a bit more of an advanced setting where you need to, now that we have like the basics there and everything kind of works, we now need to start being able to conditionally control certain things, especially for permissions, and that's sort of so I'm kind of beating my own drum. And this is not just me. I, mean, I think there's a general consensus among the contributor community that as we look towards 6.4, extensibility and configurability needs to be a cornerstone. Um, because how do you use this functionality for, you know, in a client setting? Right now you have to give them access to everything. And that's not really what you want to do. Uh, and so unfortunately for 6.3, there's not much function. There's really little uh, when it comes to extensibility. Uh, but that is really, hopefully, there's a bunch of us pushing for this going to be a really focused part of 6.4. Um, this is not promoted yet, but we're actually going to hold uh, a developer hour. It's very similar to this hallway hang lot, but a little bit more, a little bit more developer-y uh, at the end of the month, last week of the month, uh, to talk specifically about extensibility, uh, talking about like what do we, what do we have now and what do we need uh, to for an agency setting for an enterprise setting. Um, so I fully hear you. It's it, everyone very well aware of that. I think a lot of the focus in the last year has been just getting some of the basics in here. <laughs> How do we edit margin and padding on content? You know things like that. But we're at this point now where if the site editor is going to be adopted more broadly, it needs the tools like you're saying. All right, thank uh, you very much. Uh, someone else had their hand up, but now I'm not seeing it. If you did have your hand up, you're welcome. Brian, to... Brian answered my question in the chat. Thank you. Oh, perfect. Oh, perfect. Okay, cool. Brian, doing good work there. Okay, so I want to I want to show you some things that are not as important as the site editor, but I think are really cool. Um, so maybe they're not, but <laughs> Um, the first thing, which is something that we hear a lot, oops, I don't want to add a new page. Um, when we have a new WordPress release, it can be scary for people who've been building with a block editor and building with block themes from the last year, because they were building on a bit of a shaky foundation because things were changing, things were being improved. And their implementations that they made, maybe they had custom CSS, maybe they had custom code to make blocks work the way they needed to in their workflows. With each new big WordPress release, things change. And that can be problematic, especially if you've implemented this custom stuff and now you need to figure out, is my custom stuff still working? What changed? So I wanted to call out this because this is something that most people, not most, but a lot of people who use the query loop block probably have custom code on it, uh, especially CSS, because here's my custom, here's my query, query uh, loop. So if you have your, your query loop, previously there was no way to control the space between each of the items in your query loop. And Furthermore, under the hood, the, the way that the, the layout for the query loop was done was a little bit funky. And so I, myself, as an example, had custom CSS to handle it and make it look better for desktop versus mobile, that sort of thing. Well, a lot of improvement was recently made and now you can control the space between the elements using block spacing. So this is really cool because this makes it consistent with something like your columns block that has block spacing. This can also be controlled in theme.json, which is great. Um, so this little minor change I wanted to call out because I know I had to update some custom CSS you know, on my query loops for 
the impending uh, 6.3. So know that this functionality is here now. It's great uh, from like a use case perspective, but you may, because you can so easily now just configure all of this, um, but know that you might need to change some custom code if you have it. The other thing about the query um, uh, loop query block is that settings have changed a little bit. So you'll notice here that we have our list in grid view. Uh, this These settings used to live on the, let me open the list view here. They used to live in the query loop itself. They used to be here. All of that has moved down to the post template. So the post template is like the template for the posts. And this is where um, that stuff lives now. And so just if you're looking for certain settings, know that that has changed. Um, so the query loop, all the settings for the query loop are very specific to controlling the query itself, whereas the post template is more about controlling the style. You'll notice that there's no styling elements on the query loop. All of that live on the post template itself. The one exception is the layout settings are on the query itself because that's kind of the outer container and that's what's going to control wide size, you know, none, so on and so forth. Um, I am seeing an interesting situation here where my images are overlapping. Testing, folks, uh, figuring out why that's happening. Um, I think it's because the aspect ratio is set on these featured images here. Um, so aspect ratio, yeah, it is. Okay, so um, aspect ratio is another thing that's being worked on currently for 6.3. Um, so that's why we're seeing that here. Uh, because I have forced it to be square, even though it is not a square area. And it's not being constrained because I have it set to 400. So little things like that, which once you know why it's happening are easy to fix, but you know, a little jarring for, for, for new users. So I want to call that out uh, because it's a, it's a subtle change, but one that can be highly impactful. The other thing that I want to show you here is changes to dimension. So this one I've been clamoring for for a long time because let me go to a simpler block. Let's just go to a heading. So before, if you wanted to have like all your margins, all your paddings, it would just like extend, like it would be like this tall uh, in the dimensions in the dimension panel. So this entire uh, dimension settings have been overhauled, and this will take. It, it all works the same, so there's nothing like will break or you know there's nothing you need to do in terms of like adapting to this change. It's just a really nice usability change that might take a little bit to get used to, but I, I think it's great. So you can now control if you wanted to control just horizontal and vertical. So you can see here in the little, let's zoom in, the little bars tell you what you're doing, top and bottom, uh, right and left. And you can do just top, you can do, you know, obviously just bottom. And then if you want fully custom, you can do custom. But again, it's a much more condensed interface than it was previously. So a really small minor thing, but something that I think is nice to see. It's part of that polishing effort that we're seeing where there's a, there's a dedicated group focusing on just how do we improve these little things, improve the experience so it's easier to use. Um, what else here? Let's see if there's any questions. Any navigation updates? Lots. N navigation, I think it's interesting. Navigation has been like one of the most complicated things ever to build, uh, for better or worse. Um, and let's go into the editor here. I am not very well versed on all the changes to navigation, but let's add a menu here. All right, so we have a simple menu. One of the things that you're going to see, which is, so I forget if this was in 6.2 or how much of this was in 6.2, but you can do a lot now within, so we now have this additional list view panel, and you can do a lot with managing your menus in this sidebar. We also have our list view here. But the benefit of this approach is that 
adjusting this stuff was always very hard. Like hitting the right thing was always a challenge. Uh, and so there's been a lot of refinement to how this all kind of functions. When you click on the link itself, you're going to get all the settings over here. Um, the other big improvement is, and this is this was part of 6.2, was the ability to see your navigation um, over here. So this is not terribly new, um, but there have been a lot of refinements to it. So you can see when I go to my navigation and I click on a page, how um, oh, that was interesting. Navigation menu is missing. I'm wondering if this is not actually linked to anything. Oh, maybe the page got deleted. Interesting. See, testing, folks, testing. <laughs> but anyway, so. But one of the things that, you know, unfortunately, Justin's not here for those that maybe came later. Justin uh, was going to attend as well. He's a co-host. He was going to show some ways to extend and talk about like building out additional functionality for teams. When it comes to navigation, this is an area that I think is a, kind of a, a big topic because navigation is something that I, this is my personal opinion. I don't reflect the, the <laughs> I don't reflect the project as a whole. I think that navigation is a really hard thing to get right. And given how many different ways websites implement navigation, it's going to be incredibly hard for this singular navigation block to account for everything. And so I think that the changes that are being made are done to improve the navigation, make it clear for, for relatively simple navigation. Um, I think once you get beyond simple navigation to things like mega menus and you know things like that, you really need to step outside of the navigation block. In kind of classic WordPress where you had that navigations menu and you had all your you know, nav menu areas and that sort of thing, menus were very much cl more closely tied to a theme. And depending on what you're trying to do, again, this is just my own opinion, uh, depending on what you're trying to do, you may be better served to build a custom block and build your own implementation. So one of the interesting approaches to this is I'm calling out WordPress VIP because they wrote, I don't know, I don't have the article handy, but their mega menu here, this kind of approach, this is all blocks, but it's custom. It's a custom block, and these are custom template parts that kind of slot in here. So it's an approach that I would imagine the developers working on the navigation block would pull their hair out, trying to how do you build this type of thing into the navigation block. But it's actually, you know, with if you're familiar with building blocks, which I know not everybody is, but if you're familiar with building blocks, it's actually not challenging to build something like this. Um, so I think navigation, the core functionality around navigation, like simple navigation, making sure it works, making sure, you know, some, you know, the majority of sites that just need simple navigation are serviced by that navigation block. Once you get to something more complicated, I think this is where you can do something custom with a custom block and custom functionality. The benefit, uh, yep, go for it. We have a question from Elisa. Yeah, go for it. I was just saying, how do you save multiple navigation types? Like if you have different types of menus, you know, a mini menu versus a full menu. You know, because this only shows one navigation, right? At least from the sidebar, I'm seeing only one. So. Oh, th that's, that's because I just have one. Um, so the, so you can create, okay, let's come back over here. So if you, you want mind to create creating just like a, another one, another variation, just so we could just see what happens. I, I, I can do it afterwards, but I just thought I'd ask. Yeah, so if you want to create a new menu, you can, here, we'll, if you want to create a new navigation menu, it will pull in ones that are saved, but you can create a new menu and build out, you know, whatever you want in the navigation menu. I'm actually curious what you're talking about with like the mini menus and, and that sort of thing. Can you expand on that? Because this, this, with this, you could build like a header menu and a footer menu and a sidebar menu, that sort of thing. Um, 
And then how will they be represented in that black sidebar where it says navigation? That's what I wanted to know. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Thank you. Yes. So this is something that is still being worked on. So again, personal personal opinion zone. I think that this section should pull in all your menus. Let's just I say think it will. One. I think it will. I think it will show, okay, show multiple yeah. menus. Yeah, perfect. Okay, because previously it would only show your most recent one. So I, I think that this did change recently. So and Nick, you can also show how to rename our navigation because that's kind of tricky. You have to go into <laughs> the last, uh, section. Very good point. So uh, we had a, renaming menus is hard, and I put in an issue this morning to change this. But right now, uh, you can if you're on your menu, you have to go over to settings, and then down to advance, and then you can change the name of your menu. So let's change navigation to or something like that. There's and some then, older features for that as well, because we kind of discussed that earlier, but they didn't really know where to put naming. And it's kind of still up in the air. They don't really know where to put the naming of it, because that would be kind of like, it would be also affecting other blocks that also have some kind of naming in it. So they're kind of yeah. having that consideration as well. Absolutely. And things like this were in this, and this is kind of where like the sidebar is just a current implementation, more functionality to come. So when you're in here, you can't, it would be great if you could come in here and maybe change the title of this. Like once you start seeing some of this, like, oh, can I change the title right here? Right now you only can move up, down, remove page, things like that. In the future, you can, you might be able to add, you should be able to add more functionality. Uh, right now it's a fairly basic implementation. I will admit I am not the most up to date on all the navigation changes, but I do know that the team has been working very hard with all sorts of improvements around navigation. And one more comment in relation to navigation: when you're in a page and you want to switch to the navigation, uh, it is possible to just kind of go into uh, the this the chain the three dots to uh, create a new menu. You can also switch the navigation to another navigation. Oh right, yeah. So, so if we can. Because here you can basically switch between uh, menus. So let's say if you're on a, some, a unique page or something, you want an, another type of menu, you just go into that area and you switch navigation and you just save the page. And by the, uh, that you have for this uh, page or that uh, template, you will have that, uh, you'll be using that navigation. So that kind of goes back to well, it's some of the stuff that Lisa was talking about as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, for example, if you had, like a header menu and a footer menu, and you were creating a brand new page. This is, let's get rid of this. This is a brand new page and you had, you know, uh, some content and you wanted to add the menu at the bottom. And you already created that footer menu. By default, it's just gonna add the first menu in your thing. You can just change that over your footer menu and now you have your footer menu. I mean, it will, it will add the latest menu that's been modified uh, into right. um, whatever it's been worked on. Yeah, these flows are are uh, still being worked out, but it's uh, it's getting much better and much more powerful. And I think that let's just take a quick look here. So when we're looking at pages, see how we have some of these icons. So this allows you to draft a new page. You see the three dots here to delete, and this is to edit. You can imagine that functionality also coming to navigation. So for example. Perhaps you could add a navigation right from this panel. Or when you're in the footer menu, maybe you could delete it or you could change it, that sort of thing. So now that we have these pieces in place, you can start to iterate in your mind like forward or like what could come. Um, but it, it's relatively new, but the goal for 6.3 is just to get it to a point where everything that is there works well. Um, new functionality can come, but everything that is here works well without any, without any issues. Um, let's see here. Does anybody, okay, so we only have 10 minutes left. Does anybody have um, anything that they're excited for or a question about, want to see? Um, I would just want to say that uh, doing a call for testing is a really good way to actually just see the new features because you go through step-by-step -step instructions. So it, it is a good way of learning about what is coming. And as a reminder, here's the link again for the call for testing.
Oh, uh, so th I think we're going to save this for the next hallway hangout, but I can give everybody kind of a sneak peek at um, some additional functionality I think is, is kind of interesting. So when we look at core, and I think um, my apologies um, for getting the gentleman's name who was talking about being able to control accessibility or who can access the editor. There's a lot more functionality around, you know, how do you, so let's come in here. When you're looking at a block, you have all the different tools over, you know, on the sidebar here. You can turn some of the stuff on and off uh, in theme.json. Controlling how this looks or what the defaults are may seem very minor, but if you're trying to set up a site for a client or set up for yourself, maybe you want control over this functionality. Core has done a really good job of adding the functionality, you know, making sure that we have padding and margin on paragraphs, that sort of thing. Now we need to showcase how you can either turn that off or configure it. So that was an article that I wrote recently. Uh, and then Justin has done some really interesting explorations into adding really niche functionality that maybe Core will never add itself. So I'm going to give you a sneak peek of that. Uh, so this is, he's actually going to, he's planning to write an article about it uh, for the developer blog. But he also has, and you can see what this kind of looks like. I'll drop it here and also put it in the chat. So this is, he's calling it when block styles are not enough. Um, so we have a lot of design functionality in core, you know, color and whatnot, but it doesn't do everything. So he has some explorations here around things like text shadows and a visual interface for changing markers and bullets uh, on lists. Again, that's something you could do with CSS, but wouldn't it be cool if in your theme or in the editor, you could provide that functionality? And so he's done some really interesting explorations that under the hood are actually quite simple. Um, sim I don't wanna, I don't wanna cut him short. Like it's, it's simple in concept and the code to implement it is not overly challenging once you understand how it works. But once you do, you can start to think about how you, as a, you know, if you're building a theme for somebody or you're building it for a client, how you could add a little bit of niche functionality where instead of having somebody put in a class or something, they actually have a, a UI to change the, you know, what a, a list looks like. And he also has some really in, uh, interesting explorations around color variations and color groups. So I just want to provide a little sneak peek of this. I think next hallway hangout, we're going to talk more about basically how do you take, use the editor as your foundation, I use WordPress core as your foundation. How do you go beyond that for niche functionality when it comes to block themes? Because as we all know, WordPress core only goes so far. I mean, that's why we have a plug plugin ecosystem, themes, so on and so forth. So a lot is in core, but I think that as we transition to kind of this workflow phase, it's really going to be focusing on workflows, you know, editing pages, you know, editing navigation, editing functionality, as opposed to adding text shadow for blocks, that sort of thing. Some of that stuff might get included, but it's really more about improving the editorial workflow of WordPress, making things work more appropriately um, as far as like, niche functionality. Um, some might still come, but a lot of it might go into the realm of plugins or extensions or something like that. And so we wanted to show you how you can do that with themes in a pretty elegant way. So that should be an exciting one in July. Hopefully Justin's power is back on by then. Um, but some cool stuff there. And uh, Nick, yep. Uh, there's a list block PR uh, from uh, Glenn Davis, and hopefully we will see additional uh, style options for the list block uh, coming into uh, WordPress 6.3. I so saw that. Will, That's very exciting. Add into the chat. So yeah, so that'd be great. Yeah. Um, so we have five minutes left. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to give go back to talk about 6.3 just really quickly and kind of do a behind the curtain thing. Um, so I only really got involved in core um, maybe about a year and a half ago. All of this stuff was completely foreign to me. Like how do these, how does this stuff get in? How does the release work? So I wanted to spend like a few minutes just kind of showing what the process is gonna look like 
as we head into 6.3. So there is a project board. It is the 6.3 editor tasks project board. As we head into, so as we head towards beta one, I'm gonna put this in the chat too. So as we head into 6.3, uh, the beta one, this project board is gonna get very busy. Um, this is where we triage all of the issues and enhancements, everything that needs to go into 6.3. So it already kind of looks like a lot. Uh, so we have this triage column. So this is where we're collecting issues that are really impacting 6.3. If it's a new feature coming into 6.3 and it breaks something, that's where this stuff is coming in. Once we triage them, and we really haven't started this yet because we're still a few weeks from beta one, but once they start getting triaged, they get started getting moved through this process. They go into in discussion, they go into to do, then they go into in progress, needs improvement or needs review, so on and so forth. So if you're running into an issue and you're like, what the heck, this is a really good place to see if that issue's already been surfaced and already is in this process. If you do not see your issue on this board, it means that we may have missed it or you're the first person reporting it. So I highly encourage you to either add an issue on GitHub. If you've never added an issue before, you don't feel comfortable doing that, please reach out to me um, or uh, Birgit Polyhack. Uh, let's see here. The um, So this roadmap, oh, sorry, that's not what I wanted. Uh, there we go. So on this, the core 6.3 release, this is, tells you who's involved in the release. So the editor triage leads are Anne McCarthy, Birgit Polyhack, uh, Faraz, I apologize for us, uh, Savalia, and myself. So if you run into issues and you're not comfortable creating an issue, uh, please reach out to us. Uh, we will help through that process. We wanna make sure every critical bug gets flagged and gets uh, on this board as we head into 6.3, because this is what the engineers and the contributors are gonna be working off of to make sure the releases goes as smoothly as possible. So, um, but it's also a good way to check if you're running into an issue and you see it here as well. Uh, and I think it's also interesting just to see what's happening and kind of kind of the command center behind the scenes. So, all right, we have a minute left. Does anybody have any last thoughts? Are they? Are you scared? Are you excited about 6.3? <laughs> All the above mixed emotions. Yeah, excited for the haikus, exactly, yes. Um, it is pretty crazy, it's already June and we're already looking, already starting to think about 6.4, so. Well, thank you everybody for attending. Um, I apologize, Justin couldn't join us. Uh, very valid reason, storms in Alabama. But uh, we will see you next uh, next month in July. We don't have a set date yet, but uh, we will get that published relatively soon. In the meantime, if you can, you have time, please do the, the call for testing. And again, if you in, in test and check out Gutenberg 16.0. And if you do find issues, reach out to any, just shout, shout, and uh, and we'll, we will get that uh, flagged and, and hopefully taken care of, so. Thank you all so much, and we will see you on the next one. Have a great day.